What's happening, everybody? Welcome back. So check out the bee activity over here near the pool garden. They are buzzing around anywhere they can find some moisture at this time. This is a good sign. This is what you want to see as we begin to approach springtime. The bees are out. They're my garden buddies. They're doing a ton of work for me, helping to pollinate, cross-pollinate, and produce an abundance of produce for us this upcoming gardening season. But I'm turning my attention over to the Hugelkultur mounds here today because I'm going to be doing something that may surprise many of you out there. I'm going to actually be deconstructing, taking these Hugelkulturs down, flattening out this area, harvesting the soil that we've created here over the course of the last many years. And I'm doing this because I'm going to be further expanding my automatic watering pool garden setup all the way to utilize the rest of this grow area. The reason I've chosen to do this, this is gonna allow me to maximize my food production in about a 20 by 15 foot area. But these two mounds here, well, they've served a tremendous purpose. We've grown amazing crops off of these mounds. And this year I was left with the decision, do I want to continually build these mounds back up, reconstruct them for the upcoming season? Or do I want to harvest the amazing soil that we've created in this plot? Here's some of the soil when I deconstructed a different Hugel culture mound in the garden. Check this out, guys. Absolutely beautiful stuff. I threw some cardoon leaves over the top just to kind of lock in the moisture, help keep the soil alive, keep the worms thriving. But this is a large heap of soil here that I'm going to be utilizing in my garden, in my pots my raised garden beds, just to top dress around my in-ground garden. So that's the deal, shouldn't take long. And I do encourage you guys to continue to follow through this process because I've got some exciting things coming with this garden design. It's all gonna tie together later on. There is truly a plan here. We're gonna utilize the cattle panels as part of this gardening design. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and get to work here and begin the deconstruction of these beds. And all this wood here, this is wonderful hugel culture wood. I'm gonna save this so that I can add them into some of my raised beds, like these pool garden grow bags here. I drove these stakes every few feet around the entire area of this hugel culture bed. And then I just kind of weaved in and out the larger branches like you can see there, just to help construct the side walls, keep everything contained. It's a great technique, works well. So check this out guys, here's a worm crawling in there, you got roots that were growing into this piece of decomposing wood, and that's just the stuff that's on the outside when we get towards the core of this mound is where all that real breakdown is going to be most evident. But this is the majority of the growing medium, the soil, that I'm going to be using to extend out my pool garden. So the way I see it, these Hugo Mounds have created several hundred dollars of premium quality soil that money can't buy. You can't get stuff like this at your local big box store or even gardening center. You can come close, but the biology, the life 
that's in this soil. The soil food web, which has been facilitated in this gardening design throughout all these years, has created a soil profile and tilth that will grow the most amazing plants you've ever seen. But just realize, guys, that I started this gardening project just like the rest of you from scratch, had to build soil, had to bring in bag soil in many situations to get things growing and get things started. But where we're at now, this is the investment part of gardening where the payoff really starts to show in so many different forms, not just the amazing produce and food that you can grow at home in your garden, but this type of stuff right here is what it's all about. Uh, here's a loofah gourd. You know, those bath sponges you probably used at least once in your life. Grow loofah gourds, also known as petula. When they're young and small, they're edible. And as they mature, you got yourself an all natural dish sponge, body sponge. There's a little fig tree growing up in the corner here that I didn't plant. I might just have to transplant this to another area of the garden. I did throw some fig tree cutting wood in this mound as well, so more than likely that's where it came from. Little fig tree. Now if we can get this volunteer fig tree to produce hundreds of pounds of figs in the future, that'd be pretty cool, right? Whoa, check this out, guys. These bees, they are loving my little sand propagation stations. I guess they're sucking some moisture out of there. Wow, that's incredible. I've never seen them swarm around all my little garden beds like this before. This is a great sign. Man, they are flying around everywhere, guys. They're not in these ones for some reason. I'm just gonna plug this fig tree right here in the sand for now. Just basically heal it in to the sand, keep it alive until I figure out where I wanna place it in the garden. But check it out, we got most of the side walls off of the hugel culture now. I'm gonna start busting this open and transplanting anything growing here that I wanna save. We got these garlic here. I've got a mugwort plant over there, some Egyptian walking onions. So we'll take those out and keep on leveling this mound. So this is why you want to get your garlic in the ground October, November. If you can get it in early enough to where it begins to root and sprout prior to getting into those colder temperatures, you get really good root formation. And then as the weather begins to warm up, boom, garlic taken off. A good place to plant garlic and onions is around your garden bed borders helps to repel pesky insects. If you missed it, we recently planted this bed out with fava beans and we're really preparing this plot for a future crop of corn that we'll be putting in here a little later in the season. So some garlic and onions around the border here will be just perfect to include into this garden bed design. So don't be afraid to move some of your plants around and get it dialed in the way you want. Here's a bunch of Egyptian walking onions that I had growing right around the base of the hugel culture. Egyptian walking onions, my friends, perennial onions. They grow an underground bulb as well as a top set onion See if I can find one. I just saw one here a moment ago. Here we go. This is what the top set onions look like. 
and they'll make the plant top heavy, topple over, and then begin to root, as you can see here. So each one of these small little onions will grow a new plant as well. An extremely prolific and useful plant. A local gardener actually gifted me just a small little clump of Egyptian walking onions like this years ago after I had purchased some other plants from them at a plant sale. And now I've got hundreds of these onions growing all over the place. We'll go add this to our new garden bed border. You can see we've got some more mature fava beans already popping up over here. We'll just continue along this edge planting in our onions. Bust out the hoary hoary dig dig tool just to loosen up. Get these onions in. They can go in pretty close too. Here's some smaller ones. Just three to four inches apart is good. And as long as I'm working this corner over here, see I've got a little gap of space over in this spot. I'm going to go ahead and plug in an ornamental. This is Dianthus. This is a perennial full sun ornamental flower. Blooms in the springtime through midfall. Don't be afraid to add in non-edible ornamental crops into your garden just for beautification and to help provide even more food for beneficials, splashes of color throughout the landscape. I think over time this is going to create a beautiful little feature right here on the edge of this garden bed, so we'll plug it in. Looks like they used some mycelium when they were growing out this crop. You got plenty of mycelium growing throughout here. We're going to loosen up the root ball here, just tease those roots out a bit, help them to run into the garden bed rather than just keep circling around. We don't want to rip the roots, just loosen up the root ball. That's good. I have another one here. And with this fig tree growing up on the edge here, it'd be nice to have some living mulch growing around the base of the tree. This will work wonderful as a living mulch, helping to beautify the garden as well. And as is customary here in the Plant Abundance Backyard Food Forest Garden, I like to welcome my new additions, my new plants to the garden by just saying, welcome to the garden, Dianthus. I hope you enjoy your stay and love your new spot. We appreciate you being here and for the beauty that you're gonna to contribute to this garden design. So this is how easy it can be to help to protect your garden beds from different pesky insects. Just go around the border with onions and garlic. Only takes a couple minutes, guys. Unfortunately, I kind of displaced this little guy who found a home here in the Hugel culture. Luckily for him though, there's plenty of places where he can find and build a new home. Just one of the many garden buddies we have here living in and around the hugel cultures. Have a good day. Well, things are coming along nicely. We've gotten quite a bit done in a short amount of time, but because this video is getting quite long, I am gonna probably do another part two video to add on to this. This garden project is always a work in progress, so there really is no start and finish to things. It's really just a constantly evolving design.